without deviation. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada is explaining here, the Mahatma does not divert his attention to anything outside Krishna because he knows perfectly well Krishna is the original Supreme Person, cause of all causes. Pure devotees are not even attracted to Krishna's other features such as Forum Mahavishnu. They are simply attracted by the two-armed form of Krishna. Right? So, even though at many other places, Srila Prabhupada does say that one can worship any of the forms of Krishna, but here we find Srila Prabhupada is very much fixed on the two-armed form of Krishna because that's the real Mahatma or in one sense, the highest form of devotional service is from a competitive aspect. Of course, we do understand that all forms of the Supreme Lord are all transcendental. But still, we do understand that Krishna being Swayam Bhagavan, so therefore, the worship of Krishna definitely has, a, you could say, a higher position, a higher position than other forms of Krishna also. So that's why here he's saying that uh, the Mahatmas, they fix their attention only on the two-armed form and no other form. So that is mean of Ananya Manaso. Then what to speak of demigods and all that? So Bhajanti Ananya Manaso Gyatva Bhutadim Avyayam because they have the proper understanding that the Supreme Lord is Avyayam. He is original, inexhaustible. So here another important point Prabhupada is writing. <clears throat> How can one become a Mahatma? Yes, such a Mahatma or great soul develops through association with other Mahatmas, pure devotees. So the Mahatma title is not the prerogative of only a select few. Anyone can become Mahatma simply by association with other Mahatmas. That is the process. Anyone can become Mahatma. Hmm. There is this uh, pastime in Vrindavan. I'm trying to recollect this devotee's name. Uh, uh, who is this uh, devotee who sponsored a good amount of money for the Krishna Balram temple? Huh? No, Guru Kripa Prabhu. Right. Yes. You can see his name is there right at the entrance, correct? of the Krishna Balram temple. You can see his name. Said he sponsored so much of money. So they did a huge fun collection from Japan. He had a team of devotees and they did quite aggressive collection in Japan. So anyways, so, um, so he tells this pastime of how one day in the middle of the night, Srila Prabhupada sent his uh, secretary to call Guru Kripa at that time Swami. So uh, he was sleeping, he woke up and the secretary was there. So yeah, so he said, what do you want? He said, Prabhupada is calling. Why? I don't know, he's calling. So anyways, so he dressed him up, dressed himself well. And then he came to meet Srila Prabhupada. He offered his obeisances. And as soon as he got up, Srila Prabhupada asked him, what were you doing? So Guru Kripa Prabhu looked as if, you know, what sort of question is this? Obviously, I was sleep, sleeping. So Prabhupada immediately asked, why were you sleeping? So he was a little bewildered. Now what to say? So then he said, uh, Srila Prabhupada, I was tired. Therefore, I was sleeping. And Prabhupada said, but I'm not sleeping. Then he said, oh, Srila Prabhupada, you can do that because you are Mahatma. And then Prabhupada said, why don't you become Mahatma? Hmm. So, so the point is, that uh, that was Shil Prabhupada's expectation that yes, anyone can become Mahatma mm -hmm. by simply following the Mahatma, by the association of the Mahatma, anyone can become. So that is the important point. So by taking association, and that means by hearing, 
by following their instructions that is how one can become mahatma so what are the symptoms of the mahatma next verse satatam kirtayanto mam yatantascha dridavrataha namasyantascha mam bhaktya nitya yukta upasate always chanting my glories and endeavoring with great determination bowing down before me these great souls perpetually worship me with devotion purport the mahatmas cannot be manufactured by rubber stamping an ordinary man his symptoms are described here a mahatma is always engaged in the chanting the glories of the supreme lord krishna the personality of godhead he has no other business he is always engaged in the glorification of the lord in other words he is not an impersonalist when the question of glorification is there one has to glorify the supreme lord praising his holy name his eternal form his transcendental quality and his uncommon pastimes one has to glorify all these things therefore a mahatma is attracted to the supreme personality of godhead one who is attached to the impersonal feature of the supreme lord the brahma jyoti is not described as mahatma in bhagavad gita he is described in a different way in the next verse the mahatma is always engaged in different activities of devotional service as described in the simad bhagavatam hearing and chanting out vishnu not a demigod or human being that is devotion devotion shravanam kirtanam vishnu and smaranam remembering him such a mahatma has formed determination to achieve the ultimate end the association of the supreme lord in any one of the five transcendental rasas to achieve that success he engages all activities mental bodily and vocal everything in the service of the supreme lord shri krishna that is called full krishna consciousness in the devotional service there are certain activities which are called which are called determined such as fasting on certain days like the 11th day of the moon ekadashi and on the appearance day of the lord all these rules and regulations are offered by the great acharya for those who are actually interested in getting admission into the association of the supreme personality of godhead in the transcendental world the mahatmas great souls strictly observe all these rules and regulation and therefore they are sure to achieve the desired results i have described in the second verse of this chapter not only is this devotional service easy but it can be performed in a happy mood one does not need to undergo any severe penance and austerity he can live this life in devotional service guided by an by an expert spiritual master and and in any position either as a householder or as a sanyasi or a brahmachari in any position and anywhere in the world he can perform this devotional service to the supreme personality of godhead and thus become actually mahatma a great soul mm. so these are symptoms of the mahatma so the first one is satatam kirtayanto maam so the prophet says therefore the lord is not impersonal so shri prabhupada in his lectures he says for the impersonalists it's it's very difficult their practice are very difficult because according to them the supreme lord is no form no qualities and what they'll speak about they have nothing to speak about because the absolute truth is uh, no no qualities cannot be glorified cannot be explained but here krishna is saying satatam kirtayanto maam so krishna himself is speaking he is a person so it's very clear that he is not he is not impersonal he is a person okay so that's the first thing satatam kirtayanto maam satatam always so always glorifying the supreme lord so talking about uh, kirtan so reading reading this somebody may say okay so i'll sit and do kirtan chant hari krishna japa and kirtan throughout the day so what is a very broad definition of kirtan that shil prabhat gave yeah so kirtan can mean glorifying the lord in any way so there's one lecture which prabhu says kirtan means you can glorify with music you can glorify with words 
you can glorify with painting so many different ways one can glorify so ultimately whatever we are doing is to glorify the lord all services are meant for that only ultimately so deity worship that is also glorification cooking that is also glorification so ultimately everything is glorification of supreme lord so therefore satanam kirtayanto maam involves all the different services to glorify okay next is yatantascha drida vrataha fully endeavoring and so prabhat says that yes so endeavor means all activities mental bodily vocal everything in the service of the supreme lord shri krishna so everything can be engaged so yatanta endeavoring with great determination drida vrataha so to follow the various rules and regulations of devotional service requires determination so now here the symptoms of mahatma are being told correct so sometimes one thinks okay who needs to follow rules and regulations those are in yellow so after i become senior don't ask me now i'm free but here what krishna is telling even the mahatmas endeavor with great determination to follow all the rules and regulations hmm? prabhat is writing in the purport the mahatmas great souls strictly observe all these rules and regulations and therefore they are sure to achieve the desired results hmm. so it's a total misunderstanding to think that those who are advanced those who are or who are on bhava prema they don't follow rules and regulations it's a total misunderstanding and shil prabhat clearly explains in the nectar of devotion this is 16 chapter shil prabhat explains that how even those who are on the raganuga platform bhava prema they also follow all the rules and regulations very strictly because first of all one who's advanced never thinks he's advanced that is the first symptom correct so therefore one who's advanced always thinks i'm neophyte and therefore if one thinks one is neophyte then he strictly follows so therefore it is not that as one progresses makes advancement then one need not follow the rules and regulations that is a total misunderstanding so the actual understanding is that one understands that rules and regulations are meant for what meant for what hmm? purification one one step ahead of that okay yes pleasing krishna ultimately smartavya satatam vishnu vismartavya na jatu chit sarve vidhi nishedasyor etayor eva kinkar all rules and regulations are ultimately meant for one purpose and that is always remembering krishna and not forgetting so all rules and regulations are meant for that purpose so therefore the as one progresses the consciousness with which one follows rules and regulations changes so in the initial stages one follows rules and regulations why ah uh, what is that impetus See, but he also comes, and for someone who is practicing spontaneous devotion, sorry, he also comes at four thirty. But for him, that impetus impetus is different. It's not attendance. What is that? It is spontaneous love for Krishna because Aarti is going on. Correct. So in the initial stages, one comes as mostly as a matter of duty or as an austerity. What to do? 
I have been told to come. Uh -huh. Nowadays they are taking attendance. Previously they were not taking attendance. I was more relaxed. Hmm? So, I, all this type of uh, mentality is a uh, very neophyte type of mentality. If one is if one is thinking like that, that oh, I have to come now, oh, they taking it and uh, oh. so if one is in that type of mood, then it's it's definitely not spiritual consciousness. Hmm. So, so one has to gradually rise above that mentality and understand that. So then one step higher than that is to think that I am performing this for what? For my own purification. Who's going to get the benefit? I'm only going to get the benefit. If I follow the rules and regulations nicely, I will get purified. I will only get benefit. Correct? It's not for somebody else. It's for me only. So that's one step higher. But then on the highest platform, so from Asakti onwards, Asakti, Bhava, Prema, on those stages, a devotee performs devotional service only because Yes, because Krishna likes it, because it's pleasing to Krishna. Therefore, I must do it. So that is the consciousness. And so, it is important that as we make progress, or as we proceed in our devotional service, then we should make progress in our consciousness, the consciousness with which we perform our different activities. So if we are still in the grumbling mood that I have to do this, I have to do that. And that's not a very healthy sign. That's not a very healthy sign. Actually, there should not be any need of attendance. That is most ideal. There should not be any need for any of the things. At at least one should perform the activities with the idea that it's for whose benefit? It's for my benefit. At least if Krishna's pleasure seems to be a little far off, but at least one can think, let me be swarthi. Nate vidu. Swarthagati. You want to be swarthi, no problem. You be swarthi by worshipping Vishnu. So at least if one thinks of one's own benefit, okay, everyone is selfish, no problem, be selfish. You want to be selfish? No problem. Perform devotional service nicely. That is real selfishness. Hmm. So, at least with that consciousness, one should come. And then gradually, of course, one should come to the platform of thinking that, yes, I need to perform because Krishna will be pleased. This is my constitutional position to please Krishna. So, that should be the consciousness. And so, therefore, ideally speaking, not that one has to be pulled and pushed and uh, please come and this and that. This is not at all a healthy spiritual atmosphere. This is diseased condition. That means, if one has not come out of that type of consciousness, Years may pass. That is another thing. Years may pass. But the disease is still there. The disease. What is the disease? What is the disease for which we are in the material world? Yes. Enjoying mentality. Enjoying mentality means what I do? Yes. What I like to do. I will do what I like to do. I will eat when I want. I will sleep when I want. I will do whatever I want. So that is enjoying mentality. I am only concern, concerned about Myself. So that's a diseased condition, and that diseased condition is what has brought us to the material world and will keep us in the material world. 
But if you want to get out of the material world, get out of the material consciousness, then one has to transform this consciousness. The transformation has to take place. Hmm. Okay. So therefore, even the Mahatma, with full determination, he follows all the rules and regulations. But then, the consciousness is different. The consciousness is to please Krishna. Hmm. So the Mahatma's great soul strictly observe all these rules and regulations and therefore they are sure to achieve the desired results. Hmm. And so you can see that uh, even in the early days when there were no temples in India, reading Giraj Maharaj's book, that time there were no temples in India. But wherever Srila Prabhupada went, he carried his small deities and wherever he stayed, every day there would be Mangalarti at 4.30. That was the rule. The program would be as usual. Prabhupada's deities would be there and they would have Mangalarti at 4.30 and everything, the whole morning program, class, everything would be. So that is how Srila Prabhupada himself was so strict to follow all that. And then what to speak if somebody is living in a temple? So there Prabhupada was simply living in some some well-wisher's house or somebody like that. But still, Prabhupada was strictly following everything. Next is Namasyanta. Namasyanta. Offering obeisances. What is so great about offering obeisances? Huh? In the qualities of Mahatma, this is being mentioned, Namasyanta, offering obeisances. What is so great about it? Okay, develop humility, that's correct. Huh. Okay, he says example for us. Okay, that's also correct. You're speaking to yourself. <laughs> this in uh, this nine. Uh, process of bhakti. Navabhida bhakti may be say vandanam. No? That is also bowing down, you know. Vandanam. Vandanam is offering prayers. Offering prayers. So, namaschantas. Bowing down is always. Okay. When, uh, well, it, well, cumulative of that. Okay. Offering prayers and. So. Okay. Fine. Okay. So, when one bows down also, one is supposed to offer some prayers. Anything else? Paramatma is everyone's heart, so is offering obeisances. Okay, that's also correct. To please the Lord. To please the Lord. How? <laughs> offering obeisances. Okay, that's correct. That's correct. Humility also comes by offering. So. Okay, humility comes. Okay, agreed. Hmm. While offering obeisances, we are supposed to think that we are our head is kept at the lotus feet of the Lord. Uh -huh. In that way, we are submitting our submissive in submitting ourselves completely and surrendering ourselves completely to the Lord. Okay, submitting ourselves and surrendering everything to the Lord. Okay, good. Okay, that's a good point. By going down, we it's an indication that uh, I'm showing that I am I have no false ego. Okay, at least one is showing. Okay. I can remember like uh, Lord is very great and we are well, that that how we have reverence, our and reverence. Okay. But on... if, when there is a love, then so when there's love, he doesn't offer obeisance. There is that is automatically it is there. It is there. 
that respect is there mm. but when we pay then that uh, that uh, it will not be <laughs> not that much proper it is mm. matlab when there is a love we, <laughs> we cannot so by that way that respect will be done in other way just like soda mata lord is great but soda mata not paying the obeisances because then it is showing stick ha so kya so, so so why here for mahatma namasyanta is being mentioned that is only the question so mahatma mahatma is like mother yashoda mother yashoda does not offer obeisances then why it is mentioned here so that is already there that obeisances will respect respecting the lord and all that jo bhi matlab giving respects but main point kya hai aapka but uh, because lord is very great okay. we are paying the obeisances that okay is the okay we understand lord is great therefore we pay okay we tell okay he thinks i'm servant yes so the basic act of offering obeisances shows that i am surrendering everything body mind words everything so just like in ashta anga and pancha anga ashta anga pranam pancha anga pranam so what is this ashta anga and pancha anga in ashtang pranam or all the eight uh, parts of the body uh, are like wo kaun sa hai kaun sa hai aat kaun sa hai aat like our head and our chest and uh... <laughs> hey chup bolo ha bolo bolo and then our uh, two hands legs kitne ho gaye bata चार तो छे हो गए हाँ छे हो गए ठीक है और दो कौन है नोज अच्छा <laughs> हेड में नोज आ जाता है ना एक हाँ ठीक है और कोई बताओ बाकी दो कौन है ईगो अच्छा वैष्णो एटिकेट बुक है क्या यहाँ पे कहीं <laughs> तो जी हेड वन हाँ two hands ah uh. two legs ah uh. then uh, one is a uh, uh, chest i don't know but uh, mm. uh, then there is a uh, vacha speech ah uh. and mind mm. these are two are important correct bmw so so along with the bodily parts the mind the intelligence and words are all वॉइस ब्रेक ऑल एक्टिविटीज मेंटल बॉडली एंड वोकल एवरीथिंग इन द सर्विस ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण सो इवन दैट ऑफरिंग ओबेसेंस इज everything comes so therefore when one offers obeisances what one should do when one offers obeisances recite the pranam mantra yes the pranam mantra of the particular deity to whom one is offering obeisances one needs to and it's actually said one should recite those mantras a little loudly not in the mind so that's how the voice is being used so we are surrendering everything so the act of offering obeisances is actually an act of surrendering an act of surrendering one's body mind words everything at the lotus feet of the supreme lord so as i uh, remember hearing from one devotee so he says that so we are placing our head at the feet of another person so what does it indicate 
we are accepting that you are great i am insignificant so i am an insignificant servant so basically so namasyanta is not simply a physical act of offering obeisances so again everything is based on consciousness so as we all know the pastor gargamuni proved so initially did not even feel like offering obeisances so initially we may offer obeisances simply as a matter of austerity duty etiquette but then we hear how the greatest of the devotees like ragunath das goswami they also would offer obeisances how many times 2000 or 1000 Ah, uh, so they were also offering so many obeisances, but what was their consciousness when they offered obeisances? Uh, so they were in that proper consciousness. So they were in the proper consciousness that I am offering obeisances because here within the body of this person there is jivatma, there is paramatma. So let me surrender. So with that consciousness they offer obe the matmas, the greatest of the devotees. They also offer obeisances, but with the proper consciousness. Ah. Uh. In the Hari Bhakti Vila style, how to offer obeisances? Hmm. How to offer Dhanavat Pranam? Offer obeisances with eight angas. Your hmm. feet, knees, chest, hands, head, sight, mind and words. Uh, sight, mind, words. With your two feet, knees, chest, hand and head touching the ground. With your eyes downcast and half open. Recite a suitable prayers while meditating on... That your head is under the Lord's lotus feet. Ah, head is under the Lord's lotus. Your hand should be extended out in front of your head, hmm. not next to your head, hmm. or tucked in your next to your chest. Correct. Of course, sometimes space constrictions are there. And panchang? Ah. To make panchanga pranam, offer obeisances with five angas: knees, arms, head, intellect, and words. Uh, so your intellect and words are there. So anyway, mind, intellect, words. So everything is offered to the supreme Lord. So therefore, so it's an act of surrender which everyone does. And so the Mahatmas they also want to surrender. They are on the highest platform of surrender. And so therefore, namasyanta, namasyanta, namasyanta chamam bhaktiya. But they're doing all these activities how? Bhaktiya in devotion. So why why what does devotion mean? Abhi pata hai na? Pancha prana mein bhi man words. Dono mein pancha mein bhi hai, ashtang mein bhi hai. Man buddhi vacha. So therefore, therefore it is important that when one is offering obeisances, one be conscious of what one is doing. It should not simply be mechanical. There was one, Shruti Kitipro tells this past time, there was one Srila Prabhupada's secretary, and his name was Nimai Das, or Nithai Das, Nithai Das. Anyway, whatever. So, uh, so he was. Uh, so, as we know, the secretary every afternoon, as Shri Prabhupada would have his massage, then what the secretary would do? Yes, he would read letters, and Prabhupada would dictate the answers. So, this uh, devotee, he was coming with one one letter. So, he would come with one letter. Shil Prabhupada would uh, dictate the answer. He would offer obeisances, go out, bring the next letter, offer obeisances, then he would read. Like that, this was happening. Four or five times, this was happening. So, after some time, Shil Prabhupada said, what is this hatchet obeisances? H-A-T-C-H-E-T, -H -E hatchet. Hatchet means what? Axe. Kuladi. So that means Sri Prabhupada wanted to say, what is this mechanical obeisances?
So, of course, Srila Prabhupada, he knew everything. What is actually happening in the mind? So, this devotee, he was actually offering obeisances mechanically. And Prabhupada knew that. He was not offering with respect. He was doing it mechanically. And so, Shrutakiti Prabhu says that, needless to say, after some months or a year or so, this devotee left. Because he did not really have respect. He didn't have respect. He was simply doing it mechanically. So on the path of bhakti, nothing is mechanical or ritualistic. So there is spiritual and there is ritual. So we should not do things ritually. We should do spiritually. So spiritually means, as it says here, bhaktiya. Bhaktiya, with devotion. With devotion means what? Yes, desire to please. Oh, myself. Ah, that's important. So, <laughs> desire to please Guru and Krishna. That is bhaktiya. So, therefore, Krishna is specifically saying here, Namasyantascha maam bhaktiya. Nitya yukta upasate upasate worships me perpetually. So these are the symptoms of Mahatma. So this is a homework question for you. So tomorrow everyone has to tell one Prabhupada pastime. Okay? Okay, fifteenth verse. Jnana yajnana champyanye yajanto mamupasate ekatvena pratakvena bahuda vishvato mukam. Others. So he's saying others. So till now in the in the two verses he described oh, matmas. Now he says anye others. Others are of three categories. So on one hand there are Mahatmas, and then there are others who can be categorized into these three categories. So, what are those three categories? Ekatvena, Pritaktvena, Bahuda, and Vishwato Mukam. So, Ekatvena refers to the monists who worship the self as one with the Lord. So, Prabhupada writes, they are the lowest and most predominant. And that is what we see in the world. Most religious organizations, they're all Mayavadis. But they're the lowest. And that has already been described in the 11th and the 12th verses. Then the next is Pritaktvena Bahuda. So they concoct many forms as the supreme. So monist means he worships oneself as the supreme. Pritaktvena Bahuda means they concoct different forms as the supreme. And so that is basically demigod worship. And that is described in the section from 20 to 25. And the third category is Vishwato Mukam, those who worship the universal form. That is described in verses 16 to 19. Worship the Supreme Lord as the one without a second. Means basically, one thinks everyone is supreme. That is the meaning there. Ekatvena, one, without a second. That means everyone is supreme. That is the monus. 
All of them are? Yes. See, as Prabhupada is writing here, anyway, somebody read the purport. This verse is summary of previous verses. Hmm. The Lord tells Arjuna... Actually, it is summary of previous verses and future verses. <clears throat> the Lord tells Arjuna that those who are purely in a Krishna consciousness and do not know anything other than Krishna are called Mahatma. Yet there are other persons who are not exactly in a position of Mahatma, but who worship Krishna also in a different ways. Okay, so they are also worshipping Krishna only, but in different ways. Some of them have already been described as the distressed, the financially disti destitute, the inquisitive, and those who are engaged in a cultivation of knowledge. But there are others who are still lower. And okay, so those are also devotees, mixed devotees. But these are still lower. Hmm. And these are divided into three. He who worships himself as one with the Supreme Lord. Okay, so that is what is Ekatvena. And that is what uh, in the translation is mentioned is worship the Supreme Lord as one without a second. So, or he who worships himself as one with the Supreme Lord. Hmm. He who concords some form of the Supreme Lord and worship that. So, this is Pritaktvena Bahuda. Hmm. He who accepts the universal form the Vishwa Rupa of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right. Vishwa Tomukam. And worship that. Out of the above three, the lowest those who worship themselves as Supreme Lord, thinking themselves to be monist, are most predominant. Such a people think themselves to be the Supreme Lord and in this mentality, they worship themselves. This is also a type of God worship for they can understand that they are not the material body, but are actually spiritual soul. At least such a sense is prominent. Yeah, so at least they know that I am spirit soul. and so they. But, but their understanding is the spirit soul and Paramatma the same. But at least they understand that I am not the body. So therefore, he is saying, okay, that is also one type of God worship. Hmm. Generally, the impersonalist worship the Supreme Lord in this way. The second class includes the worshippers of the demigods those who by imagination, imaginations consider any form to be the form of Supreme Lord. And the third class includes those who cannot conceive of anything beyond the manifestation of this material universe. They consider the universe to be supreme organism or entity and worship that. The universe is also form of the Lord. Okay, so that's the Vishwatama. Okay, fine. We'll take a break and continue. Hare
Okay, so 16 to 19 is Vishwathomukam, worshippers of the universal form. That means seeing different aspects of the universe in connection to the Supreme Lord. So that's Vishwathomukam. This is a broad fan. Sixteen. Aham Kraturaham Yagya Swadaham Maham Aushadham Mantroham Maham Evajam Aham Agni Raham Hutam. But it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant, I am the butter and the fire and the offering. Purport. The Vedic sacrifice, known as Jyotish Shomaya, is also Krishna and he is also Mahayagya, mentioned in the Smriti. The oblations offered to the Pitruloka, the sacrifice performed to please the Pitruloka, considered as a kind of drug in the form of clarified butter, is also Krishna. The mantras chanted in this connection are also Krishna. And many other communities made out with milk products for offering in the sacrifice are also Krishna. The fire is also Krishna because fire is one of the five elements, material elements, and is therefore claimed as the separated energy of Krishna. In other words, the Vedic sacrifice recommended in the Karmakanda division of the Vedas are in total also Krishna. Or in other words, those who are engaged in rendering devotional service unto Krishna are to be understood to have performed all the sacrifice recommended in the Vedas. Okay, so you can see that how ultimately everything has a connection to Krishna because Krishna is the creator of everything. So nothing can be separated from Krishna. The Aham Kratu, Kratu means the Vedic rituals, Aham Yajna, uh, Swadha, Swadha, um, Swadha means the oblation of the butter. Um, Aushadam, hmm. So therefore, the Aushadi also doesn't work unless Krishna gives sanction. Mm. So therefore, um, in Ayurveda, they say even while taking medicines, one should uh, remember the Supreme Lord. Huh? Mm. So because only if the Lord sanctions, the medicine will have effect. Otherwise, if the Lord doesn't sanction, Medicine also cannot have effect. Mantroham. So in this way, all aspects of the Vedic sacrifices are also Krishna. So therefore, nothing can be separated from Krishna. So even though one may perform in Karmakanda rituals also, of course, ultimately the enjoyer of all sacrifices is Krishna. Hmm. The Agni is Krishna. And so Prabhupada is concluding by saying, therefore, one who has come to devotional service has already performed all these various other yajnas. 17. Pitaha masya jagato mata data pitamaha vedyam pavitra monkara riksamaya jurebacha. Purport. The entire cosmic manifestations, moving and non moving, are manifestations by different activities of Krishna's energy. In the material existence, we create different relationships with different living entities who are nothing but Krishna's marginal energy. Under the creation of Prakriti, some of them appear as our father, mother, grandfather, creator, etc. But actually, they are parts and parcels of Krishna. As such, these living entities who appear to be our father, mother, etc. are nothing but Krishna. In this verse, the word dhata means creator. Not only our father, and mother parts and parcel of Krishna, but the creator, grandmother and grandfather, etc. are also Krishna. Actually, any living entity being part and parcel of Krishna is Krishna. All the Vedas, therefore, aim only towards Krishna. Whatever we want to know through the Vedas is but a progressive step towards understanding Krishna. That subject matter which helps us purify our constitutional position is especially Krishna. Similarly, the living entity, who 
who is inquisitive to understand all Vedic principles is also part and parcel of Krishna and as such is also Krishna. In all the Vedic mantras, the word Om called Pranava is a transcendental sound vibration and is also Krishna. And because the Pranava or Omkari is very prominent in all the hymns of the four Vedas, Sama, Yajur, Ruk and Atharva, they are also understood to be Krishna. Hmm. So, please. Huh? Living entities are also called Krishna. So, you know the philosophy. What is the philosophy? Achindya, Beda, Abeda. So, yes, from one perspective, as good as Krishna. That is, qualitatively. So, because of parts and parts of Krishna. So, Krishna is mother, Krishna is father. Hmm? So, therefore, somebody becomes ma father and mother and they are able to act as father and mother only because Krishna is allowing them to do so. Hmm? Ah, without Paramatma, how anything can exist? Yes, that is true. But then uh, they, are, they can function as father and mother only because Krishna allows them to do that. Because they are able to maintain only because Krishna is providing them, they maintain the children. If Krishna doesn't provide to them, how they'll maintain children? So they were there's one purport where Shil Prabhupada is explaining. I'm not remembering which one. He's explaining that how one it is um, it is sinful if one does not serve one's father and mother. I'm forgetting the context in which he writes. So in any case, so he writes this statement, it is sinful if one does not serve one's father and mother. So somebody may think, oh, that means we should serve father and mother. Then immediately he writes, then what about the supreme father and mother? Huh? So, so yes, so therefore, the supreme father and mother allow somebody to become father and mother. And therefore, the real duty is to the supreme father and mother. And of course, all other duties are done in relationship to him. So that is what uh, the living entity who appeared as Chitraketu's son, who was that? Harshashok. So that is what he told his father and mother. What he told? Hmm? What he told is hmm, in Kubatani. What Harshashok told Chitraketu Maharaj? I think he told that you both are not my mother, uh, mother and father. He said <laughs> like that. You're not my father and mother. Real. Ah. Yeah, so he said, in, wh in which body you are my father and mother? I had so many fathers and mothers. So there, Srila Prabhupada quotes this verse. Of course, in lectures also he quotes. What is that? He says, my, he doesn't say who, who wrote that. He says, some poet. Janme, Janme, Pita, Mata, Pai. Guru, Krishna. Something that's there, no? In every life, one can get father and mother. because one Without father and mother, how one is born? Father and mother has to be there. But it is not possible to get Guru Krishna in every life. So that is very rare. But the point is that is the ultimate father and mother is Krishna. And only when they sanction can somebody maintain us, can somebody help us. So all that is possible only when Krishna sanctions. So therefore, our ultimate service has to be towards Krishna. So he is the father, he is the mother, the support. 
pitaham asya jagatah mata data data is about pitamaha so he is the one who gives the vedas vedyam pavitram omkara we all read that omkara is impersonal sound vibration of the supreme lord all the vedas are coming from okay fine 18 gatir barta prabhu sakshi nivasa sharanam surat prabhava pralaya sthanam nidanam bijam avyayam I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place, and the eternal sea. Purport. Gati means the destination, where we want to go. But the ultimate goal is Krishna. Although people do not know it. One who does not know Krishna is misled. And his so-called progressive march is either partial or hallucinatory. There are many who make as their destination different demigods and by rigid performance of the strict respective methods, they reach different planets known as Chandraloka, Suryaloka, Indraloka, Maharloka, etc. But all such lokas are planets being creations of Krishna are simultaneously Krishna and not Krishna. Hmm. Such planets being manifestations of Krishna's energy are also Krishna, but actually they serve only as a step forward for realization of Krishna. To approach the different energies of Krishna is to approach Krishna indirectly. One should directly approach Krishna, for that will save time and energy. For example, if there is a possibility of going to the top of a building by the help of an elevator, why should one go by the staircase step by step? Everything is resting on Krishna's energy. Therefore, without Krishna's shelter, nothing can exist. Krishna is the supreme ruler because everything belongs to him and everything exists on his energy. Krishna being situated in everyone's heart is the supreme witness. The residences, countries or planets on which we live are also Krishna. Krishna is the ultimate goal of shelter and therefore one should take shelter of Krishna either for protection or for annihilation of his distress. And whenever we have to take protection, we should know that our protection must be a living force. Krishna is the supreme living entity. And since Krishna is the source of our generation or the supreme father, no one can be a better friend than Krishna, nor can anyone be a better well-wisher. Krishna is the original source of creation and the ultimate rest after annihilation. Krishna is therefore the eternal cause of all causes. Yes. So this is approaching Krishna. All this are various ways to approach Krishna indirectly through his different energies. So of course, Srila Prabhupada, therefore, he says, is uh, highlighting that uh, Siddhanta, Shakti, Shakti Matiyor, Abheda. Therefore, he says, all such lokas or planets being creations of Krishna are simultaneously Krishna and not Krishna. Okay, so that's how energy, energetic, simultaneously one and different. But then further on he says, such planets being manifestations of Krishna's energy are also Krishna, but actually they serve only as a step forward for realization of Krishna. To approach the different energies of Krishna is to approach Krishna indirectly. One should directly approach Krishna. That will save time and energy. But of course, in the initial stages, it is not possible for one to approach Krishna directly because one does not have that realization. So therefore, initially, it is easier to see different aspects of the creation as energies of Krishna as or has some connection to the Supreme. So that is why that is the first step of God realization, to see different aspects of the universe as connected to the Supreme. So he is Gati, he is the ultimate destination for everyone, even though somebody may not know it, but ultimately he is the destination. So even if somebody says, okay, my destination is Devatas, but Devatas are also parts and pulses of Krishna. Or if somebody says, my destination is hell, hellish planets are also Krishna. Correct? So therefore, ultimately, everyone's destination is Krishna only. Because without connection to Krishna, nobody can get anything. Gati, Bharata, he is the sustainer. Hmm. So therefore, no one else is the sustainer. Neither should one think that one is sustaining somebody else. And so brahmacharis may think, uh, those are preachers, they may think they are sustaining their counselees, correct? Hmm? 
Who sustains? Only Krishna. Hmm. So that is what we find in the past time of Dhritarashtra. When Dhritarashtra and Gandhari left home to go to the forest after, who's preaching? Vidura strong preaching, they left to the forest. Then Yudhishthira Maharaj began to lament because till then he was taking care of his uncle and aunt. So they left to the forest without telling anyone. Then Yudhishthira Maharaj started lamenting. He said, oh, my poor uncle and aunt, who will take care of them in the forest? Wild animals will attack. Then who came? Yes, then Narada Muni came and told Yudhishthira Maharaj, don't worry. In the forest, the Lord is taking care of so many animals, birds, bees, trees, so many things the Lord is taking care of. Why, why he won't take care of your uncle and aunt? He'll take care. And then he told them, okay, then Yudhishthira Maharaj told, maybe at least for the Antim Kriya I have to go to the forest. Then Narada Muni said, no, you don't have to go for that also. Automatically fire will come from their bodies and burn the bodies. Don't have to do anything. So that is how, so especially as brahmacharis is very important. Hmm? So sometimes one may think, oh, I have to maintain my parents. Of course, we need to do our duty. It does not mean we become irresponsible. Whatever duty is there, we have to perform. But one has to understand that ultimately Krishna will maintain everyone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, many years back, there was one brahmachari. And uh, so, so when he became brahmachari, then the mother started weeping and crying. And so, who will look after me? What is this? You're irresponsible. This, is that. So, the brahmachari, he, uh, he was new and so he was not so fixed up. And so because of the emotional blackmailing of the mother, so then he left the ashram and got married. So then uh, he got married and then uh, and then the mother was staying. And then what happens? Ah. Uh, then another yuddha starts. Everyone knows. Mother-in-law, daughter-in-law. And then what the wife will tell? Separate. Then what the mother will do? Ah. So this is what happens. So therefore, no one can take care of anyone. That is the ultimate thing. Everything is a big illusion. That's all. This one will take care, that one will take care. All big illusion. No one can take care of anyone. Of course, again, whatever duty one has, one should do. It is, it's not that one becomes irresponsible. But at the same time, when there is higher duty, then one should not compromise higher duty for lower duty. So the highest duty is serving the ultimate mother and Krishna. That is the highest duty. So that should not be compromised. Of course, if we serve the Supreme Lord, at the same time take care of Father Mother, that's fine. Mm -hmm. but, say, but it's not that we sacrifice the higher duty for the lower duty. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately one has to understand who can take care of anyone? No. Uh, That it is the illusion if somebody thinks that except Krishna, anyone can take care of us. Correct. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. So that is what Deha Patya Kalatra Deshu Atma Sainishu Asasapi Tesham Pramatta Nidhanam Pashanapi Napashati. So only when one is Pramatta, when one is illusion, mad, then only then one thinks that uh, all these people will take care of me. Now nobody can. Care. So therefore, Krishna is saying, I am the Bharata, I am the Prabhu, I am the Sakshi, witness for everything. Now today's class also, today morning's class also, Prabhupada was saying, no? you can't cheat Krishna. Krishna is everywhere and he is watching. He has eyes everywhere. Yes, he has eyes everywhere. He is watching 
what everyone is doing, why he is doing. So one cannot cheat. So he is Nivasa, the abode, Sharanam, refuge, Surat, the most intimate friends. Surit, Surit, very close to the heart, closest Surit. Prabhava, Pralaya, Sthanam, creation, maintenance, destruction, Nidhanam, Bijama. Okay, 19. Tapam yaham maham varsham nigrunam yusrujami cha amritam chaiva mrityus cha sadasachaham arjuna. O Arjuna, I give heat and a withhold and send forth the rain. I am immortality and I am also death personified. Both spirit and matter are in me. Purport. Krishna, by his different energies, deposes heat and light through the agency of electricity and the sun. During the summer season, it is Krishna who checks rain from falling from the sky. And then during the rainy season, he gives unceasing torrents of rains. The energy which sustains us by pro prolonging the duration of our life is Krishna. And Krishna meets us at the end of death. Okay. End as a death. By analyzing all these different energies of Krishna, one can ascertain that for Krishna there is no distinction between matter and spirit. Or in other words, he is both matter and spirit. In the advanced stage of Krishna consciousness, one therefore makes no such distinction. He sees only Krishna in everything. Since Krishna is both matter and spirit, the gigantic universal form comparing all material manifestation is also Krishna. And his pastimes in Vrindavan are as 200 Shamsundar playing on a flute are those of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm. So Krishna says, I give heat, withhold and send forth the rain. So all this is happening because of Krishna's control. So now there is heat. No rain. So somebody is withholding the rain. After some months, then there will be rain. So how all this is happening? Automatically, correct? By chance. No, not by chance. Krishna is controlling all this. And so, and of course, Prabhupada says in many lectures that if you don't worship Krishna now, you say there's no God, then one will be forced to see God when? At the time of death. Mrityu. Then here he says, Sat, Asat, Cha, Aham. I am both Sat and Asat. I am both spirit and matter. So Prabhupada writes this very important and interesting statement here. He is both matter and spirit. And before that, for Krishna, there is no distinction between matter and spirit. Or in other words, he is both matter and spirit. So therefore, from Krishna's viewpoint, there is no difference between material energy, spiritual energy, no different matter and spirit. Because from Krishna's viewpoint, it's all the same because everything is coming from him. So therefore, everything is Krishna. Therefore, there's no difference for Krishna. So the difference is only for us based upon our consciousness. Prabhupada's famous example is what? Yes, the microphone. Is this matter or spirit? Yes, depends on what is used for. So otherwise, from Krishna's viewpoint, it's all his energy. So therefore, from Krishna's viewpoint, there's no difference. Of course, we do understand there is a difference. One is sentient, one is insentient. There is a difference. But at the same time, from Krishna's viewpoint, there's no difference because both are coming from him. So therefore, when one is advanced, then he makes no such distinction because he sees everything as Krishna. Stavar jangam deki na deki taramuti sarvatra hoi Because he says everything coming from Krishna. So therefore, when one is advanced in Krishna consciousness, then one is careful to use everything. Because one sees everything as Krishna's energy. Okay, so this is the end of this section.
of the worshippers of the universal form, those who see different aspects of the universe in connection to the supreme. So, of course, as far as we, uh, as far as those worshippers are concerned, they may not know who is Krishna. They only understand that different aspects of the universe have some connection to the supreme. But as far as we are concerned, we perfectly understand that everything has a connection to Krishna as the supreme personality of God. Hmm? But like we can see that living entity can go back to Krishna. They can perform devotional service. Stone cannot do devotional service. So and, and living entity becomes more dear to Krishna because they are. So then how can we say there is no difference? Yes, there is no difference in the sense that both are coming from Krishna. In that sense, there is no difference. Both but, are coming from Krishna and both can be engaged in Krishna service. It's like... <laughs> so therefore, the... The philosophy of oneness and difference always exists. That philosophy always exists. So therefore, they both are one in the sense that both are coming from Krishna. But right. at the same time, there is a difference also. Therefore, Krishna is distinguishing na, para prakriti or para prakriti. But both are prakriti and both are coming from whom? Krishna. Both are coming from Krishna. So from that viewpoint, there is no difference because both of them are Krishna's energies. But at the same time, there is a difference. Therefore, Krishna is saying one is superior, another is inferior. Superior and inferior means what? There is a difference. So both, the, that principle always exists. There is a difference, at the same time, there is no difference. Also in previous verses, he mentioned the names of three Vedas. Ah. But Atharva Veda is missing. Is yeah, there... it is there in, my, in many places you will find that. Any specific reason? For so uh, what I heard is, I, I couldn't find any definite Shastic reference for that. I'm, I'll have to find out. But then what I heard heard is that uh, the Atharva Veda is uh, like a sort of uh, summary of all the other three Vedas. And so therefore, um, the main things are there in the other three Vedas. The Atharva Veda is uh, just like a summary. And therefore, sometimes it's it's not taken into consideration. That's what I heard. I have to find out some something more definitive. Okay, so that's the end of this section. Now, huh? Ah. Hmm, bolo. That uh, this so-called uh, matter is also spiritual. Correct. So we should see it as a spiritual or so what exactly you saying? I'll take some time to find out. Please. Okay, fine. No problem. But yes, that Siddhanta is correct. Okay, so now we go to the next section. Prithatvena Bahuda. Those who concoct different forms to be the supreme and that's basically worship of the demigods. Now, Krishna has already spoken about demigod worship in the seventh chapter. So, these are some points of revision, you can say. Twenty. Trevedyamam soma paputa papa Yagye Rishva Swargatim Prathayante Te Punyamasadya Surendra Lokam Ashnanti Divyan Divideva Bhogan. Those who study the Vedas and drink the Soma juice seeking the heavenly planets worship me indirectly. Purified of sinful reactions, they take birth on the pious heavenly planet of Indra where they enjoy godly delights. So we are aware of this philosophy. We hear it many times. So those who are uh, the knowers of the again here it's a three Vedas, three Vidya, hmm, three Vedas. So they are worshipping me, three Vidya, Mam, Mam, the word Mam is coming. Hmm. So they are worshipping me only, but at the same time it is indirectly. So so, so they bring the Soma, Soma, Pa, Puta, so they get purified by performing these Vedic sacrifices. They get purified of their various sins. And uh, they attain to the heavenly planets. Surendra Lokam. Sura Indra. The king of the Suras. Sura Indra Lokam. And they enjoy over there. Okay. But after enjoying what happens? 
तेतम बुक्वा स्वर्गलोक विशाल श्रीने पुण्ये मर्तलोक विशंती एवं त्रयी धर्म मनुप्रपन्ना गता गतम काम काम लभंते when they have thus enjoyed vast heavenly sense pleasure and the results of the pious activities are exhausted they return to this mortal planet again thus those who seek sense enjoyment by adhering to the principles of the three vedas achieve only repeated birth and death purport one who is promoted to the higher planet is system enjoy the longer duration of life and better facilities for sense enjoyment <clears throat> yet one who is not allowed to stay there forever one is again sent back to the earth upon finishing the resultant fruits of the past activities he who has not attained the perfection of knowledge is indicated in the vedanta sutra janmadi yasya yata or in other words he who fails to understand krishna the cause of all causes becomes baffled about the achieving the ultimate goal of life and is thus subjected to the routine of being promoted to the higher planets and then again coming down as if as if situated on a ferris wheel which sometimes goes up and sometimes come down the purport is that instead of being elevated to the spiritual world from which there is no longer any possibility of coming down one simply revolves in a cycle of birth and death on a higher and lower planet system one should better take to the spiritual world to enjoy the eternal life full of bliss and knowledge and never return to this miserable material existence okay kshine punye martlokam vishanti what is proper example for that one is ferris wheel another when the punya when the punya is exhausted must come down okay that is that is one ah airplane the rocket goes up the fuel is exhausted one has to come down the fuel is compared to the punya so the when the punya is exhausted one will have to come down so what's the use so one simply has to go up and down now as krishna is speaking about these demigod worshipers he wants to compare them with the pure devotees and so therefore the next verse is about his pure devotees Hmm. Though this entire section is about demigod worshippers from twenty twenty five, in in the middle he inserts one verse about his pure devotees. So that's how Krishna is so eager to speak about his pure devotees. Hmm. But in any case, we'll just complete the section on the demigods, and then we'll come back to the twenty second verse, twenty third. Ye apyanya devata bhakta yajante shraddhayan vitaha. ते अपी मामे वकाउंते या यजन्त यविदि पूर्वकम् दोस आर डिवोटीज़ ऑफ़ अदर गॉड्स एंड वर्शिप देम विथ फेथ एक्चुअली वर्शिप ओनली मी ओ सन ऑफ़ कुंती बट दे डू सो इन अ रॉंग वे पपुट पर्सन्स वार एंगेज इन द वर्शिप ऑफ़ डेमिगॉड्स आर नॉट वेरी इंटेलिजेंट अल्दो सच वर्शिप इज़ ऑफ़ For example, when a man pours water on the leaves and branches of a tree without pouring water on the root, he does so without sufficient knowledge or without observing regulative principles. Similarly, the process of rendering service to different parts of body is to supply food to the stomach. The demigods are, so to speak, different officers and directors in the government of the supreme lord. One has to follow the laws made by the government. not by the officers or directors similarly everyone is to offer his worship to the supreme lord only that will automatically satisfy the different officers and directors of the lord the officers and directors are engaged as representatives of the government and to offer some bribe to the officers and directors is illegal this is stated here as avidhi purvakam in other words Krishna does not approve the unnecessary worship of the demigods. If some outsider reads this, he say, "What is this? Who doesn't offer bribe? Who says offering bribe is illegal?" <laughs> But in any case, so worshiping the devtas is like offering bribe. 
So therefore, one should only worship the Supreme Lord. So it is indirect worship. Avidhi Purvakam. So it is worship of the Supreme Lord, but it is indirect, Ill illegal. So it is not required. So if one waters the root of the tree, automatically the water goes. Similarly, if one worships the Supreme Lord, automatically the devtas will be satisfied. 24. Aham hi sarva yajnanam bhokta cha prabhu reva cha natumam abhijananti tatve natas chavanti te. So why these, uh, why it is called indirect worship is explaining in this verse. So his previous verse he said it is avidhi purvakam, illegal, indirect. Why it is indirect is explaining in this verse. I am the only enjoyer and master of all sacrifices. Therefore, those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down. So, because he is the only enjoyer, ahami sarva yajnana bhokta cha prabhu revacha. So, therefore, worshipping the demigods is indirect or illegal. Because if Krishna is the ultimate enjoyer, bhokta, then everything should go to him na, directly. Why in why go through the devatas? So sometimes in government offices, they're middlemen, right? Agents. So how, how I'm sure many of us have experience in government offices, what happens? So something can go directly to that main officer, but in between some people are sitting. And they say, if you go through us, what will happen? Ah, it will go for your... Ah. So, saying that, they take money. So, something which can go directly, these people are doing in-between work. Indirect. Therefore, it is indirect. So, Krishna is the ultimate enjoyer. Everyone, everything is supposed to go to Krishna directly. Now the demigods are in between. They are saying, no, no, you go through us. Of course, they are not saying these people think like that. So they think, okay, if we go, if we go to Krishna directly, maybe he'll give, maybe he won't give. But if we go through these devatas, certainly we'll get what we want. So it is like middlemen. So therefore, it is indirect. So therefore, Krishna is saying, this is indirect, this is illegal. Because ultimate enjoyer is Krishna. So therefore, Krishna says in this verse, I am the enjoyer of all sacrifices because I am the supreme master. Less intelligent persons, however, without knowing this fact, worship demigods for temporary benefit. Therefore, they fall down to material existence. And then what is the destination of the demigod worshippers? Next verse. Yanti deva vrata devan pitran yanti pitra vrataha bhutani yanti bhuteja yanti madhyaj no pimam. Those who worship the demigods will take birth among demigods. Those who worship ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. Purport. If one has any desire to go to the moon, the sun or any other planet, one can attain the desired destination by following specific Vedic principles recommended for that purpose, such as the process technically known as Darsa Purnamas. These are vividly described in the fruitive activities portion of the Vedas, which recommends a specific worship of demigods situated on different heavenly planets. Similarly, one can attain the Pita planets by performing a specific Yajna. Similarly, one can go to many ghostly planets and become a yaksha, a rak, raksas, Raksh. and pisaj. Pisaja worship is called black arts or black magic. There are many men who practice this black art and they think that it is spiritualism. But such activities are completely materialistic. Similarly, a pure devotee who worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead only, achieve the planets of Vakuntas, Vakunta and Krishna Loka without a doubt. It is very easy to understand through this important verse that if by simply worshipping the demigods, one can achieve the heavenly planets, or by worshipping the Pitas, achieve the Pita planets, or by practicing black arts, achieve the ghostly planet, why can the pure devotee 
not achieve the planet of Krishna or Vishnu. Unfortunately, many people have no information of these sublime planets where Krishna and Vishnu live. And because they do not know of them, they fall down. Even the impersonalists fall down from the Brahma Jyoti. The Krishna conscious movement is therefore distributing sublime information to the entire human society to the effect that by simply chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one can become perfect in this life and go back home, back to Godhead. Mm. So, whomever one worships, one goes there. Read this. She is a prostitute. That's all Krishna says. Nyanti Deva Vrta Devan. How you, how you nonsense say that everyone goes to God? This is nonsense. You can go to Shiva. You can go to Indra. You can go. There are so many planets and you will go there. And that is that is reasonable. And how do you say that whatever whatever ticket I purchase, I go to this uh, Delhi. Therefore, they are nonsense. Mudha, rascals. They do not know what is God, what is demigod, what is Lord Shiva, what is Lord Vishnu or Brahma. They do not know. If a woman says, oh, everyone is my husband, then she is prostitute. That's mm. all. So, yes. So, that's the way people say, oh, worship anyone, you can go to the Supreme. No, that is prostitutes. Okay, fine. So, the rest of the verses are dealing with pure devotional service. So including the 22nd verse and then from the 26th verse onwards, they're all dealing with pure devotional service. Very important verses. All those verses are very, very important. Having a clear understanding is the basis of a devotional service. So very important. So we'll begin that discussion tomorrow. Chicken. Ah, and we will end the class, then you announce. Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Shri Mat Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Samvit Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Hare Krishna, so tomorrow we will be having this class from 2 to 4.